Shalom Aleichem and welcome everyone as we Baruch Hashem are preparing once again for Shabbat, this week being Shabbat, Parashat Lech Lecha. At the end of last week's parasha, we were introduced to Avram, who eventually will become Avraham Avinu. Uh, the truth is that Avram lived and saw Noah, and he saw Noah's children. And uh, Medrash Tan Chuma actually brings down that Avraham had a conversation with Noah and his children and asked them, in what zechut were they saved from the Mabu? And what zechut did they be able to exist throughout the Mabu? And Shem al Kitzedek replied that they survived in the Teva only because they were doing Hesed 24-7. As we brought down, you know, that uh, Noah and his children were serving all the animals all the time, giving out food. There was all chesed, they couldn't even sleep. They each one had a schedule, how to keep which animal to give when. And because of that chesed, they, they survived. Hazal tell us that as soon as Abraham Avinu heard this, Abraham Avinu said, if that's how much they got reward for feeding animals, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to feed people. And there Abraham Avinu started his chesed, he started his eshel, he started his place in giving people to eat, to drink, to sleep, based on his conversation that he had with Noah and his children. And this is how Abraham Avinu got started on his path of chesed, and he's known for chesed. In this week's parasha, HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to Abraham, who's already been doing chesed, in the city of Haran. And Hashem comes and tells him, Lech lecha mi'artzecha, mulatecha mi'betavicha, and la'aretz ha'shareka. It's time for you to get moving. It's time for you to get out of here, and go for yourself, to the land that I will show you. Abraham Avinu is a host. Abraham Avinu is the one who takes wanderers on the street, and brings them into his house, to give them to eat, to drink. And now Abraham Avinu is turned into a wanderer. Someone who has to go away from his house. Abraham Avinu is about chesed. He can't do chesed. How does he do chesed on the road? He doesn't have his, his eshel on the road. He needs to do it in a place. And Hashem has him now becoming a wanderer. Hashem tell us that that too, that lech lecha to leave and become a wanderer was actually part of Abraham Avinu becoming a Baal chesed. They say over his story, about Rav Nachum of Chernobyl, one of the Rebbes of Chernobyl. And he was very involved in raising funds to free Jewish prisoners. People who were imprisoned by the states, falsified charges. And he collected money. And it's a big mitzvah to free Jewish prisoners. And this was his big mitzvah that he was very involved. He was always going around, always collecting, always doing things about this mitzvah. And one time in a certain city, some people started rumors about him and they arrested him and threw him into jail. And his Hasidim would come visit him and after a couple of nights, one of the Hasidim asked him, Rebbe, how could this be? You're the biggest Baal Tzedakah when it comes to freeing prisoners. You're the man who's, who does it. And you yourself end up in jail? How could it be? And the Rebbe of Chernobyl said, this is exactly why I'm here. You see, I'm always dealing with prisoners, always dealing with people in jail and getting them out. But I never knew what it means to be in prison. I never knew what it means to be in jail. How can I do chesed to someone who's sitting in jail if I don't know what it feels like to be in jail? Now that I'm here, I'm able to do my mitzvah even better. They say, Abraham Avinu, yeah, you want to be a big Baal chesed. You want to help people on the road, give them food, drink. But how do you know what they really need? And how do you know how they're really experiencing it? Unless you yourself are experienced it. And so Hashem tells him, Lech lecha for yourself, go to learn how to be a bigger Ba I said, You want to be a big Ba I said, You want to help people, you want to give them to eat, drink, and sleep, you want to give them what they need. You have to learn what it means to need it. This idea is actually, in fact, an idea that's brought down all over. I saw it. And the Ben Chai has an, an idea similar, there's a similar story, similar idea. The Ben Chai says, 
what's Pshat of Yom Kippur? Why does a person need to go through Yom Kippur? One of the main ideas of Yom Kippur is that a person comes out of Yom Kippur knowing what it means to be hungry. So when you see someone asking for food, someone collecting money, you know what it means to be hungry. This is the whole shot of, of, of Yom Kippur. You know it was the holiest day? Yeah, it's the holiest day of the year in order for you to know what it means for other persons to suffer. And so the truth is, everything that we go through in life is actually something for us to be better to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's why Hashem puts us into places. In fact, the Zohar HaKadosh tells us that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling Avram, Lech Lecha, it's not only Avram he's speaking to. Lech Lecha Me'artzecha is actually talking to the Nishama. Speaking to the Nishama, which is viewed as being the Av of the Guf. Avram is the Av of the Guf, of the body. And Hashem is speaking to every neshama, Lech Lecha, go for yourself. To the land that I'll show you, in which I will place you. That's why Hashem didn't say to Eretz Kenan. Because every neshama is supposed to go somewhere else. Hashem was telling Abraham Avinu, He's telling all of us, that wherever your neshama goes, I'm going with you. I'll be there with you. And you're going there for a reason. There was a, a, one famous rabbi from Lithuania once said, I forgot his name right now, but he once said, a Jew is never lost. Wherever that Jew is, he's supposed to be there. There's something there for him to do. Uh, the, I was reading yesterday, I was going through a couple of different stories. They say that the, the, the Boston Rebbe, the Boston Rebbe, and he was growing up here in America, and he went to Camp Masifta, which would become eventually Camp Roshraga, which is actually the camp that I attended. And uh, when he was a young bacher, he was there. He was one of the one of the of the Hasidic Shoelim that were there. And he says that uh, you know Camp Masifta is a yeshiva camp, and um, most of the day you learn, and they have one two hours during the daytime that they play sports. And he said that it was his first time that he heard that they're playing baseball. And uh, Shraga Five and Lovitz, everyone said everyone's playing baseball. So they came and he's. See, a guy never played baseball in his life. Young Bacher, he comes to look. He said he's looking, looking. And then they said they're missing one person. And they were begging him to, to play. He said, I never played. I, my pay is my tits up. He said, yeah. They say, no, don't worry. So he comes and he, he says, he, you know, he, he didn't have a, the, the glove to catch the ball. So he was scared. And Rav Shai went through it and, you know, he learned, he learned the game. And he said many, many years later, um, when he was in Boston, there was a, someone in the community that had a son-in-law who wasn't so religious and he meant, eventually ended up getting a car ride with him and, and they couldn't talk about anything. And then somehow the, the radio was talking about baseball. So the, the Rebbe, remembering his experience with baseball, started mentioning certain plays in baseball and they started to have a conversation and it, and it started to get lively. And this guy started to, couldn't believe that the Rebbe knew about baseball and how it's played and the names of, of plays. And eventually, uh, this guy started coming closer to the Rebbe and eventually became Jose Betshuva. See, the person doesn't know why he was in a certain place. And the Rebbe said, I didn't know why I had to learn how to play baseball. I, I even thought it was nonsense why I had to play baseball. But I did it. And, and a person doesn't know why he's in a certain place, why something is happening to him. But the truth is, our neshama is lech lecha, is going for ourselves and Hashem is putting it in places that we're supposed to be. Just like later on in Bereshit, we're going to learn that Hagar was crying how her son's going to die. And all of, us, Hashem, all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, it says Hashem said, Hashem opened her eyes and she saw the well. All of us don't know where we're going. We have no idea what we're doing. Our Neshama is somewhere on the road. But eventually, we'll see where the land is Hashem showing us. How everything that we did in life, how everything that we went is leading up to where we're supposed to go. There's a very famous rabbi in the Lithuanian jury that uh, Big Baal Hashkafo, everybody knows about him. Rav Chatzko Levenstein, Zechat Tzadik Lebracha. One of the greatest influences in his generation. What people don't know is that in his youth, he was not very learned at all. He was an orphan and he worked as a delivery boy for a long time. And one Friday, after hard work of week, hard, hard week of work, 
he got paid for his job. He went to the mikvah, Erev Shabbat, he went to the mikvah. He hung up his jacket. And when he came back from the mikvah, the money was gone. Someone had stolen it. And that was a life-altering moment for him. He said, I worked an entire week for this money. And in a moment, it was all gone. This is what money is? I can't spend my life running after something that could be gone in two seconds. And so he said, I'm going to go learn in the Beit Midrash. And <laughs> said, my money's gone anyway. And he went and he learned and he became who everyone knows, Yerichaskel Levenstein. How did that happen? A person realized that what's happening in his life is leading him in the direction that he's supposed to be. Everyone knows of the great Sar Shner who started the Beit Yaakov movement. One of the ways people don't know is how she started the Beit Yaakov movement, where this idea all came. Is that one day she was sitting in a shul and the Rav of the shul gave a drasha and it was Hanukkah time. And he said, there were Hashmanoim, a small group of people and they changed the world. And he said, who is thinking about the Jewish girls and their education? And there was a lot of people in the shul. But Sarah Shner was there as well. And she was sitting in the Ezzet Nashim. She heard the speech and she decided she's going to do something about it. She realized that her neshama was being led in places that it's supposed to go to hear what it's supposed to hear in order for it to get to where it's supposed to get. This is how a person is supposed to view all his ways in life. Is that Hashem is putting us in places that we're supposed to be. Why is the person living here? Why is the person living there? Why ended up here? Why ended up there? There's a reason for why we are where we are. I want to develop this, this idea, this thought about Lech Lecha, Me'art Secha. And we all know Lech Lecha, go for yourself. Rashi says, Lahanatcha, for your pleasure. Ultovatcha, and for your benefit. What does this mean? For your pleasure and for your benefit. So that means, Shom Eschcha Legoy Godel, there I'm going to make you a great na nation. Vekani Atazochen Levanim, here you're not going to have children. So Hashem is telling him, go, go for yourself, because it will be better for you somewhere else. And this is called the Nisayon. It's also called the Tat. Some say that it means that he, he went Lishma. That it means even though Hashem said you're going to get all these things, he still went and did because Hashem told him to go. And, and that was the Nisayon. However, I saw an idea brought down from Rav Shimshon Pincus about what it means, Lech Lecha Me'artzecha. What it means, Lech Lecha, go for yourself. For your hanav and your tova, for your benefit and for your good. Hashem told Abraham Avinu that you going, you have to go for your own good. What does this mean? Rapinkus explains that when a person does hesed, there are two parts to the hesed. There's the part of the hesed that he does to someone. Right? That's one part of the hesed. And the second part of the hesed is that he made himself a Baal hesed. Right? There's two parts. I'm helping someone, but at the same time, I'm turning myself into a Baal hesed. This is similar to the idea that the Sefer Hinuch talks about is that if you have uh, someone who's a tzaddik, but he keeps doing ma'asim ra'im, right, even if it's a government job, and make him the executioner, and they tell him keep killing people, eventually that bad deeds are going to cause him to become bad. And the same thing, you have a rasha, and you t make him do good things, he's going to become good. Take a rasha and give him your money, tell him to give tzedakah, from your own money, from not his money, from someone else's money, but he's doing that ma'asim, he's going to become that way. It means whatever you do, so the hesed that you do to someone else becomes part of you. And that's the two parts of hesed. Now the question is, which part of those two is the greater part? Helping someone else or turning yourself into a Baal hesed? Our pasuk tells us, lech lecha, go for yourself. The hesed, the greatest part of hesed is the hesed that you do to yourself. Because the truth is, if you don't give the, the money, Hashem will send him money from someone else. 
right? Everyone gets what they're supposed to get in the end. And so you're really not helping him out because he can get help from somewhere else. The only help that you're really doing is the help to yourself. The Zohar Kodesh defines chesed. The Zohar Kodesh says, what's chesed? Chesed is hamid chesed im kono. A person who does chesed with a kadosh baruch Hu. What does it mean doing a chesed with a kadosh baruch Hu? What does that mean? Rav Pinkus explains. Hashem can do everything. Right? Akob yidei shemaim. Chutz. Miniyat shemaim. That means the only thing that Hashem can do, so to speak, is you yourself to become a Girat Shemaim. You yourself to become a better person. And so HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling Abraham Avinu, Lech Lecha, go for yourself. Because when you go, you're going to do things, you're going to do Chesed. That's you. That's going to turn for you. That's the main part of Chesed. That's what Hashem is telling Abraham Avinu. You got to do things for yourself. When you do Chesed to others, the greatest thing you're doing is actually doing it for yourself. And that's how Avraham Avinu was able to see each person and realize how great they are. He realized that if they just start doing mitzvot, they're going to turn themselves into a great people. Right? We have this idea there's a bad person and there's a good person. The truth is, if you do good deeds, you can become a good person. That's it. Everybody has a huge potential. That's how Avraham Avinu can deal with all these people now. Because he knows, really know they're really good. They just have to lech lecha. They have to go for themselves. They have to start doing things for themselves. Once they start doing things for themselves, they can reach a whole different, whole different level. Think about it. Look in society. We think that today we are, uh, we're, uh, we're very advanced compared to generations in the past, right? We have technology. Look, uh, today uh, we had a, a famous uh, Hollywood celebrity end up going to space. Uh, it's uh, in, in days in the past, they never thought about such a thing, sending regular people to space, sending people to space at all. But the truth is, yes, technology, people have done great. But people themselves, have they changed from what it was years ago? The same Anashim Ra'im like they had in Saddam, the same Anashim Ra'im like they had during the Yemei Mabu, they're all exactly the same. Because no one has gone for themselves. Lech Lecha hasn't happened yet. Abraham Avinu was told Lech Lecha. The Jewish people were told Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha goes for yourself. Make yourself better people. Make yourself better Hesed. Do Hesed not for someone else. Do Hesed for yourself. Uh, last week I was reading, I was just praying for Pashat Noah. I was reading an interesting story. And I think it fits so properly here. There was this guy, Big Bar Hesed. And he would help everybody on the street, everybody in the world, anybody needs. But his family, he always neglected. He didn't do hesed for his family. Hey, right? It's, uh, you don't get as much uh, uh, you know, thank yous or plaques or uh, letters when you do for your family. It just happens. And that's it. And so one day he was heading to Shear and he was walking in Sinair to Israel. He was walking to Shear to go into the shul and he sees a lady crossing the streets with shopping bags and she's struggling under the shopping bags. And he starts thinking, should I go over? Should I help her? Should I not? Might be an issue of tzniyas. But then again, she's, look at her, she can't walk. And so he runs over and he says, Geveret, where are you going to? Let me help you. And this woman looks at him and says, Maish, you don't know me? He looks up and he sees his wife. He, is, she, he says, oh, hey, Malka, it's just you. I have to go to Shia. And he runs away. How can it be? How can it be? A person is supposed to do lech lecha. He's supposed to go for himself. The whole point is to make yourself better. It's not who you're doing the chesed to and not what the chesed is, but rather you're doing the chesed to yourself, to making yourself a better person. Rav Pincus, Rav Pincus brings a few stories to help understand what it means to do a chesed to yourself. There was a great tzaddik, Rav Yosef Liss, who lost his whole family in the Holocaust. Comes to Yisrael, comes to Yerushalayim, and the Briska Rav tells him to get remarried. He doesn't want to get remarried. He finally gets remarried. Briska Rav, you know, convinced him. And for years after the marriage, about 10 years, he didn't have any children. And finally, after 10 years, he finally had a baby girl. And someone asked him, what was the schut? How did you get the, 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 the baby finally? He says, you know what the schut was? Me, myself. 
I, I caused my own zikhut. I said, how? He says, not once in these 10 years did I go to the brisket rub and tell him, give me a beracha. Because I didn't want him to think that I feel bad that he made me get married and I don't have children. So I kept my mouth sh shut. And because of that, I had the zikhut. He didn't go. He didn't go. He didn't want to make him feel bad. That is chesed. Nobody needs to know what you did. Chesed is when it's private and you did it to yourself, chesed. It's my own zechut, he said. There was a famous makubo in Yerushalayim, the Baal HaLeshem. And he had a daughter. His daughter was married and she couldn't have children. She went to the doctors. The doctor said it's impossible for you to have children. She comes home distraught, didn't know what to do. She sees her father. Her father was learning Torah. So he didn't want, she didn't want to bother. She goes out to the outside of the house on the stairs, whatever, and she starts to cry. The Baal HaLeshem finishes learning. He goes out for a little air. He sees his daughter crying on the stairs. So he tells her what happened. She says, the doctor said, I can't have children. He says, why are you crying outside? Come tell me. We'll cry together. And she says, I saw you learning Torah. I'm not disturbing you. He says, if that's the case, I'm giving you a bracha, you'll have children. And she ended up having a grandson who was the famous posek, Rav Yosef Shalom Eliyashev. How? She did her own chesed. She saw her father learning, she didn't bother him. She didn't tell him about it. She, she sat down, she did all dealing with herself. It's these type of chesed that make a person lech lecha, goes for himself. Like the Zara Kodesh said, he makes his own chesed, he makes himself a better person. And Rav Pinkas ends off with one more story about a Jew living in Yerushalayim and also blessed with, he didn't have any children. He was not yet blessed with children. And there was a chassidish rebbe in Brak. And he said, anyone who comes to my shul on Rosh Hashanah and he gets mafter on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, right, that talks about Hanat having a child, guarantee he's going to have a child. And so this man from Yerushalayim goes to Bnei Brak Rosh Hashanah. And at the first night of Aravit, right, first night of Aravit Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe comes over and tells him that there's another Jew who came for the same exact thing. And tomorrow, I don't, he says, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> there are two people that want maftir, the two women need children. So what did this man do? He didn't come there the next morning. He went to a different shul and said, you know what? I'd rather let someone else get it than me myself. And within a year, he was blessed with a baby. When a person does chesed with himself, that's considered lech lecha, going for yourself. Not looking for plaques, not looking for cards, not looking for titles. Not anything. Person has something's needed in the community, something needed here. Person goes and he does it. He doesn't ask everybody to, you know, uh, 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 give me a, 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 a you know, I, I need the, the newspaper pictures and the, the shaking of the hands, the cutting of the ribbon, <laughs> all these different things. That's not hasan. That's not going to help person grow. That's not lech lecha. When I Baruch Hu told. Abraham Avinu, lech lecha, go for yourself, go for your own tova. What does it mean for your own tova? To make yourself a better person. And that comes when a person does chesed, when a person does things that makes himself bigger, makes himself greater. And that happens through chesed that's private. You know, if you look, all the great tzaddikim, they did chesed, you can learn the biographies, you see how much chesed they're doing. I read about Ramon Chayaliyahu, tzaddik levarcha. He was going, no one even knew when he was already the chief rabbi, he was still going in secret privately to the, uh, to, to the Hever Kedusha to help them metahir the bodies after they died. And, and his family didn't even know he was going there. One time his son was following him and found out that he was doing these type of things. Chief rabbi, what is he needed for? <laughs> he's, he's already set. Because that's what it means to build your character, to build yourself, to become a greater person. When a person does chesed that's private, nobody knows about it. It's just something between him and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what it means. Lech lecha. Um, let's move on to another idea from this week's parasha. And this week's parasha, we learned that Abraham Avinu is, uh, goes down to Mitzrayim, right? There's no food in Canaan. He goes down to Mitzrayim. There, uh, his, his wife is captured. Um, he says it's his sister. Paro gets in, in, inflicted with a disease. Eventually, Paro figures out what happens. And then Paro fills him up with the gold and silver. And the Pasuk says, 
And Avram Avinu is very heavy with uh, uh, with miknem, with the cattle, the kasev v'zohav, silver and gold. The Al Sheikh says, "What does it mean, heavy? When a person has jewelry, right? You see the girls, the ladies, they wear a lot of jewelry. And it's heavy sometimes. Yet no one, they're not complaining that it's heavy. It's because the beauty and the joy of wearing it makes it light. However, for Avram Avinu." He didn't get any personal joy from having so much gold and silver and mikna. He All he needed was uh, the funds to do his chesed. He, he didn't need extra funds. And so when he had all these extra things for him, that already felt heavy. Right? That's why Abraham Avinu, Rashi says, Kishachazim <laughs> He went to the same hotels and he went down when he went down to Messiah. When he came back up, same hotels. A person shouldn't change the place where he stayed. What does this mean? He's keeping Derech Understanding it this way. When he went down, he didn't have a lot of money. So he didn't go to five-star hotels. He went to a one-star hotel. Even if he had a half a star, maybe. Right? He didn't have any money, so he had to give him credit. There's a, there's a famine. There's no food around. He stayed in cheap places. Now he's rich, Right? But richness wasn't considered to him anything. So he went to the same one and a half, half a star hotel. He didn't have to now, now I can go to the Sheraton. Now I can go to Hilton. Now, now, that's not him. I'm the same exact Avram. This money is baggage. It's too heavy for me. It's Kaved Me'od. Avraham Avinu is teaching us how to view, how to view money, how to view Kesem, <clears throat> the Zahav, and all the things that we have. It's not to take us over. That's why the Pasuk tells us the Pasuk in Devarim tells us about the Berachot. It says, And it will overtake you. How do Berachot overtake you? A person has so much money. How can, the, how can the Berachot overtake him? You know what can overtake you? When you don't want it and it keeps coming to you. That's what it means. When a person views Mikne, Kesef, Vizov as being Kaved Me'od, then a Berachot can overtake a person. Because if, otherwise, if you have $100, $200 is not enough. $200 and $400 is not enough. There's two ways to view money. Abraham Avinu was in the view that this is already too much. Right? Rav Galinsky shares a story that when Rav Rami Afen, the Rosh Hashiva of Novardok in Bailistok, came to visit him in Eretz Yisrael, they went to visit the Stipler Gaon. And it was Malva Malka, and they saw the Stipler Gaon, who now became a well known rabbi in Eretz Yisrael, was eating Malva Malka, leftover challah, and some salty fish. And Rav Avram Yafen told Rav Galinsky, he hasn't changed in 30 years. The same thing that he used to eat 30 years ago is the same thing he's eating today. He didn't change. Right, Rav Glinsky brings a famous ma'aseh, a, a famous uh, ma'aseh, a story about the, a, a rabbi that was well respected by his community. And the, the rabbi used to walk around with an old hat. And so the community decided, we're going to get him a new hat. So they went to the hat store and they got a gift certificate. And they came to the rabbi and said, Rabbi, on behalf of the community, we're presenting you this gift certificate. Go and get any hat that you want. And the rabbi said, thank you very much, but I don't need the gift. I'm very good with my old hat. They said, what do you mean you go with the old hat? It's not kavod for the tzibur for you to walk around with your old hat. He said, you want to get me a gold? You want me to get me a hat? Okay. He says, let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to get a hat, right? Nice new hat. Everything looks beautiful. But then you look at me and you say, my suit is old. I cannot have an old suit with, an old, with a new hat. They say, rabbi, you're right. We're going to go get you a gift certificate to a suit store. He says, very good. So now I get a new suit. What about my shirt, my shoes? Rabbi, you're right. We'll get it for you. Okay, thousand dollars, whatever it is. We'll get it for you. He says, now I'm all dressed nicely and I'm standing next to my wife. And my wife is not going to have new clothes. Oh, Rabbi, this is true. Okay, so you know, we'll figure out. We'll collect more. We'll get something. He says, now me and my wife are all dressed in new wardrobe. And look at the furniture in our house. It's all old. It's not going to match. And so we're going to have to get all new furniture. New furniture. What about my walls, my paint, my floors, my this, my that? Rabbi, they say, you're right, maybe we should get you a new apartment. He says, you see, it's going to end up costing a million dollars. So therefore, <laughs> keep your hat. Let me have my hat. Shalom uh, Yisrael. You know, the way a person looks and what it means to have money. Um, Abraham Avinu was teaching us that. And on the other side of the money, in the same parasha, we have Abraham Avinu's nephew, Lot. 
What was the cause of Lot's downfall? Going and ending up in Sodom and then being captured by the kings when during the war. The Pasik there says when they captured him, it says, They took Lot and his wealth. Lot was Avram's nephew, Ben Achi Avram. Then they went on the way. He had been living in Sodom. Rav Schwab says, the Pasuk should really say, ben achi Avram. They took Lot, the nephew. nephew of Avram, and then they took his, his, his money. Finish talking who he is, say he said his name, explain who he is, and then say what they took, and they took him from there. Why they mentioned his money? First, they took Lot, the Ed, and his money, the, 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 the nephew of Avram. This in chapter uh, Yudalit, Pasuk Yudbet. He says from here, we see the Pasuk is telling us what was Lot's downfall. His rechusho, his wealth. His wealth is what caused him and Avram to be separate. Because it, it splits Avram and him with money in between. Right? We know the whole fight the shepherds got into. My, it's going to be our property so we can eat it already. It's not ours yet. But what's all, all that coming from? It's coming from the idea that Lot went after money. Whereas Abraham Avinu saw Kaved Be'od, he was heavy with money. To Lot, money was the way. Lot, money was the thing that he was looking for. And so that ended up separating him from Abraham. Not only from Abraham. The Pasuk earlier said, Vaisa Lot Mikedem. What does it mean, Mikedem? Mikadmonoshel Olam. From Hashem Himself. That Lot separated from Hashem because of money. Money caused Lot to go away. Money can be used two different ways. Right? You have Abraham Avinu who sees money as being kaved what it's heavy. I'm going to use it the right way. I'm going to do the right things. I'll do a with it. Or you see Lot, money is the way. And ends up going to live in Sidon, where people really enjoy their money. It was a very wealthy society. They didn't like sharing anything. Two different sides of the world. And how you view money. But Rashwab goes on and says, there's a Midrash Rabbah. The Midrash Rabbah says on this week's parasha, it says, it comments, it brings down a pasuk. The pasuk says, Le'ta'ava yivakesh nifrad yitgala. This is the pasuk in Mishlei. The separated person will desire lust and will be exposed in every Torah conclave. And the, the Midrash says, Rabbi Tanhuma ben Rabbi Hiya, the name of Rabbi Hoshaya, adds that there is never a Shabbat when we don't read, read the story of Lot. What does Rabbi Tanhuma mean? That every Shabbat we reread read the story of Lot. Now if you read the Medrash, the Medrash Rabbah where this comes from, the Medrash Rabbah wants to associate this with the idea of Lot's daughters, what happened with Lot's daughters and Lot. But Rashwab says, he thinks that this Medrash Rabbah is actually talking about Lot and his money. He says, how? Listen to this. People spend a whole Shabbat in Kiddushah. They go through Kabbalat Shabbat. They're singing praises of Hashem. They have the Shabbat meal. Kiddush, Zemirot, Divrei Torah. Shabbat day. They spend learning Torah. They're with Rabbanim. They're with Tamil Chachamim. They eat Sudah Shishit. They come home, they make Havdalah. Boom, after Havdalah, Nifrat. They separate from Kiddushah. They're straight to the business, straight to the, the secular world. Time to go out on, 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 on Central Avenue. Time to uh, go to Chas Shalom, the movies. Time to go somewhere. Nifrad from Shabbat. Just like when Lot saw money, he was Nifrad. He separated from, from Abraham, separating from Hashem when he came to some money. Some people are like that every Motzei Shabbat. Shabbat, they're all be to Shabbat Tahara. Minute Shabbat's over. They separate from everything that's kadosh. <laughs> 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 why, so why are you making a malam al Why Because you have to stretch it. That's what it means. You know, uh, going back 50 years ago, everywhere in New York, Motsi Shabbat, everyone went to the movies. That was it. Motsi Shabbat, especially early Motsi Shabbat, 56 years ago, everyone was going to the movies. It took the Rabbanim to turn Motsi, uh, Saturday night into Motzei Shabbat. 
One of the first things was Achiezer and Reisman. They started the Navi Shir in Brooklyn. Other Shirim started in Brooklyn. Other places like that. Making people have what to do. Motzei Shabbat. Look in the winter. Four thirty. What time? Five thirty. Ready Shabbat comes. What are people going to do? So the Nifrat from Shabbat. They separate right away. What do we do now? Baruch Hashem. Now we have opportunities. We have father and son, right? Or door to door. Because we have daughters too. So uh, in January, people have what to do now. Because yeah, otherwise, that's one of the reasons why we read Shuva on, on Motzei Shabbat. They say we don't want Shabbat right away to run away. We don't want to, okay, Shalom Alot, we're out. No, let's read a little bit more. Let's come down a little bit. There's still holiness involved. And then we take that with us throughout the week. That's what it means. We don't want to be like Lot, Has to Shalom. It's over. Every week it happens. Because there are people like that who, who uh, think that they have to run away right away when Shabbat comes out. And we'll end up with one more story, a famous story from Rav Yaakov Galinsky, of how money can do that to a person and make a person leave from whatever he was before. There was a story that went in, in Europe, one of the cities. There was a poor man by the name of Yossi. And uh, there was another guy who was selling lottery tickets. And he convinced Yossi to buy a lottery ticket. He didn't want to buy it. and said, why I waste my money on that? He ended up buying one lottery ticket. And a few months later, they finally uh, drew the winning, winning numbers. And this poor man was the only one who had the ticket and he won. So in the middle of this night, the guy who was in charge of the lottery tickets decided he was going to go visit Yossi and to tell him that he's a rich man and give him the good news. So it's a European cold, wintry, stormy, snowy night. And he does the walk to the poor side of the town. He comes to Yossi's house and he knocks on the door and no answer. But he knocks and knocks and knocks. Finally an answer and the door opens up a little bit. And he tells Yossi, let me inside. I have good news for you. And he says, what's the good news? He says, you won the lottery ticket. You are a rich man now. Instead of opening the door any further, Yassi tells him, you're, tells this guy, you're the biggest chutzpanyak in the world. You have so much disrespect. He says, what do you mean? I came to tell you good news. He said, nobody else knows that I'm rich. You're the only one who knows that I'm rich and you wake me up in the middle of the night? That's real chutzpah. You should not be waking up rich people in the middle of the night. Right? Person becomes rich. In one minute, his whole mind changes. That was Lot. Shalom, we should not be like that either. Thinking one minute we came rich, or a minute we could come out of Kiddusha, we have to run away from everything right away. No. Oh, Hashem, let's not get um, confused with what's out there. All the shtuyot, all the nonsense that seems rich. It's very glamorous. It's very glitzy. All right? Hollywood knows how to make everything exciting and fun and wow. Right? It's what, that's, that, that's what they do. That's, that's what cinema is all about. And, and that's what the world does. It's the whole advertising, all this marketing. It's all, that's all what it is. It's all fake ways to make people excited about something. When you actually come there, there's nothing there. But our job is not to get confused with the richness and the glitz and the glamour, but rather know that the Kiddushah is right here. And just the way we had every Shabbat, we can tap into that more than we can do throughout the week. We should keep with it throughout the week as well. Figure out how we can take the Kiddushah throughout the whole week as well. And with this, I would like to wish everybody... A Shabbat Shalom.